Morning, folks. Oh, that's weird. There's zero viewers but one like. It's weird how those uh, counters work. I'm always a little skeptical of those numbers. Um, anyway, good morning. Um, sorry about the late start. Um, I um, I recently made the switch over to Linux, and um, uh, I guess OBS didn't want to see my capture device, so I had to switch back to Windows. Um, I guess I shouldn't have left it to the last minute to try to make sure that it worked, but um, that's why I'm late. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, we'll we'll carry on in just a, a couple minutes. We'll see if we can get a few more people in the stream, but uh, today. We're going to be doing just a bunch of exercises together. So uh, in the meantime, get your, your pencils out, your paper, sharpen those pencils, uh, get your, your mind turned on. If, um, if you drink coffee, now would be a great time for a coffee, but I suppose you guys are a little on the young side for coffee. I think I started drinking coffee when I was in, I think I was in grade nine, actually, when I started drinking coffee. So maybe, maybe you have coffee. I don't know. If you, if you have coffee, get your coffee, turn your brain on. We're going to do some, some mathematics. It's going to be great. Um, okay, yeah, I'll just, I'll just uh, hang out for a little bit longer. Um, speaking of coffee, I might, I might go start, uh, start some coffee. And um, yeah, this is, this is going to be good. So I'll be right back. Oh, look at that. I turned my back. We got 21 people. That's awesome. Good morning. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's jump to it. So we're just going to start off with some examples. Uh, I'm going to get you to uh, do them in a specific amount of time, and then I'll answer it for you, just like we always do. So, um, so for today's class, we're going to start off with uh, some examples. So uh, I guess we could call this a work period. Okay, so we're going to be working um, for pretty much the whole time. Okay, so the work period. So uh, let's go ahead with this. Uh, the first one, I'll write question one. Uh, this is going to be fairly straightforward. 2 to the power of 3 um, times 2 to the power of 4. And I want your answer in exponential form. Okay, so for example, like I, I, I wouldn't want you to write like in, like maybe maybe the question was uh, like 32. I, I don't want you to write 32. I want you to write 2 to the power of 5. Okay, so leave it as uh, an, an exponent. Um, I'm going to give you 10 seconds for that one. Okay, just a very short amount of time for that one. So 10 seconds starting now. Hope you have your pencils already. Boom, done. Okay, uh, I know that was a very short amount of time, but there's not a whole lot to do with this one. So, uh, so we're going to use uh, the product law. So that would be 2 to the power of 3 plus 4, which is, of course, 2 to the power of 7. And if anyone uh, is wondering, I'm pretty sure that's, uh, what is that, 128? Yeah, it's 128. Okay, uh, second one. Let's do the next one. Let's do, uh, ooh, how about this one? 8 to the power of 0 
times eight to the power of one times eight to the power of two. Okay, and again, 10 seconds. I guess I'll just leave this thing out. Oops, come on. Whoop, there it is, 10 seconds, go. Also leave your answer in exponential form. Okie dokes. Okay, so this one is going to be, well, they all have a base of eight, so they have the same base. So this is eight uh, to the power of zero plus one plus two, which, well, one plus two is three, so this is eight to the power of three. Okay, uh, let's try this one. Ooh, this is a good one. Um, let's do three, I like this one. We are gonna do negative one half, to the power of five times negative one half to the power of negative three times negative one half. Okay, and maybe this one, oops, maybe this one I'll give you 15 seconds or maybe I'll do 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds starting now. Okay, 20 seconds is up. Okay, so there's really nothing like terribly different about this question. They all have the same base. The base just happens to be a fraction. So the base is negative one half. So let me write that, negative one half. And I've got, well, don't forget that this actually has sort of an imaginary exponent of one. Not so much imaginary, but more invisible. You have an invisible exponent of one. So this is going to be negative one half to the power of five minus three plus one, which is equal to, well, negative one half to the power of, well, five minus three is two, two plus one is three. Um, so this is negative one half to the power of three. Great. Uh, let's see here. I wonder if this question is going to come up later or if I, I should introduce it now. I've got, a, I've got a good idea for a question, but I don't see it in the book. So I'm going to give you this question now. This is kind of a tricky one. Four. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is a tricky one. This is kind of like this kind of question that I would put on an assignment to make you think. Okay. Uh, let's try. Let's try this one. Um, we'll do eight, no, I don't need exponents, or brackets, I don't need brackets. So let's do eight to the power of three times two to the power of four. And again, I want you to leave your exponent in exponential form, okay? So that applies to this question as well. So don't just punch it into a calculator and see this big, huge number that a calculator is gonna get you. Um, I want you to actually write it in an exponential form. And I'm gonna give you 30 seconds for this one. You might have to think about it for a little while, but you'll get it eventually. Um, and if you don't, then I'll show you how to do it. And while we do that, I'm gonna grab my coffee. Oh, it is. It is up. Sorry, guys. 
Uh, give me two more seconds. I did not have time this morning to make a coffee. So I'm going to make it right now and I'll show you what I like to do for a coffee. I have this nice little pour over machine that currently has cat hair in it. I wonder who's responsible for that. There we go. Get that cat hair out of here. Okay. I've got this nice little paper filter in here. This is a, it's called a V60. I don't know why it's called a V60, but that's what they call it. And then we've got some nice freshly ground coffee. Maybe you heard my coffee grinder in the background. And then, uh, oops, gotta get all that coffee, all that good stuff. Okay, there we go. I guess you can't really see inside. Oh, yeah, you can. And then what I like to do is I like to put a little dip right into the middle of it so that the water evenly penetrates all of the coffee grounds. And I've got this nice little kettle filled with boiling hot water. Then I pour it right into that little pool. Kind of do a little circle. And when you first put water on the coffee like this, it's called a bloom. Because you're trying to let all the water sort of bloom into the coffee and let all that coffee get wet. You don't want any sort of dry pockets of, of coffee. Otherwise, you don't get a nice even distribution of, of, uh, of coffee drips. And you let it sit for about 45 seconds, just enough time for me to answer this question for you. So, the problem here is that we don't have the same base. Okay, that's, that's our issue. But, lucky for us, you may have noticed that 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that 8 with 2 to the power of 3. So, I'm going to say, okay, instead of writing 8, to the power of 3, I'm going to write 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 3 because this thing right here, this thing is 8, right? That's what 8 is. And I've got that to the power of 3, and this is being multiplied by 2 to the power of 4, okay? Well, lucky for us, we have a little thing um, uh, called, uh, well, what do we call that? The uh, exponent of an exponent rule. So uh, what we would do here is we multiply we multiply these two exponents. So these two exponents get multiplied against each other. So I've got three times three is nine. So this is two to the power of nine times two to the power of four. And that would be equal to two to the power of 13. Okay, time for a little more water in my, oh, you can't even see this, but I'm just gonna fill up this coffee filter with Boiling hot water. <clears throat> Yummy, look at that. I guess you can't really see that. Oh yeah, there you go. Mmm. Mmm. If I'm gonna be perfectly honest, this isn't gonna be the best cup of coffee ever. I'm not crazy about these beans. These are these are my regular beans. I think maybe I told you last week my friend got some beans from Colombia. Oof, those. Now those were good. Okay, could it also be 8 to the power of 4? Hmm, 8 to the power of 4, eh? I don't think so. No, it can't be 8 to the power of 4. But you could, I can kind of see what you're doing there. Um, or 8 to the power of 5. Mm, so with these sorts of things, what you're going to want to do, you're going to want... You're going to want to get the smallest base that you can. As soon as you start going for the bigger bases, you're going to run into some problems. So let's see if we can try it. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm, uh, what, like if, if you're not really sure what people are talking about in the chat, I'll kind, of, I'll kind of show you what I'm pretty sure they're doing. So let's just sort of bring this over here and we'll sort of do an alternate version where we're trying to put it under the base of 8. So maybe, maybe you saw the 8 and the 2 and you said, you know, I like eight more than I like two, so I'm going to try to put it over. I'm, I'm going to try to put it uh, over with a, a base of eight. Well, let's see what happens when we do that. Well, I'll keep the first one. I've got eight to the power of three times. Well, two to the power, two to the power of four is sixteen. Two to the power of three is equal to eight. 
So you could do this. You could do, you know, you could do something like this. You could do two to the power of three times two, right? Because this right here, that's what two to the power of four is, right? Two to the power of four is two to the power of three times two to the power of one, right? So you could do that. I'm just gonna erase this just to leave some space. And when you did that, you'd notice that you would get, well, this is eight times, well, two to the power of three is eight times two, or and this is supposed to be eight to the three. So eight to the power of three times eight, this right here, that's eight to the power of four, but then you also have this two left over. So you can't really get rid of that two. So you change the two to a four and, and uh, eight to the two, okay. Um, change the two to the four to an eight. Okay, so there's your problem. Two to the four is not equal to eight. Two to the four is equal to 16. It's two to the three that's equal to eight. See, and this is where, I mean, even if you have a deep understanding of this, it, this is still, you're still prone to making the mistake that two to the four, uh, like, and I'm not I'm not ragging on you. I'm just I'm just telling you that, that this is a very very regular mistake that that lots and lots and lots and lots of people continue to make well into university. Like this is a very common mistake. People see this and it's just our brains want to multiply things. It's just our natural instinct. So we say two to the power of four. Oh, that must be eight because two times four because two times four. Here, what am I trying to write here? Is because it's two times four, right? So two to the power, power of four is not equal to eight. Uh, eight is actually equal to two times four, right? Yeah, now you see your mistake. Okay, so I mean, that's that's why, you know, having a, a deep understanding is very important. I'll, 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 never, I'll never say that you shouldn't understand something. You should always understand mathematics, absolutely. But sometimes, sometimes understanding is not enough. Right, you, you you need that that practice and just like if if you written this out like a hundred times, then then you wouldn't have made that mistake, right? So sometimes we need more than just understanding. We need practice, 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 practice. Okay, so um, let's see how my coffee is doing here. Oh, just about ready. I'm gonna put a little more water in, and then it should be ready. Okay, but I also don't want it to overflow. Okay, are we ready for another question? Yes, we are. Okay, um, great. Okay, now let's do some dividing ones. Let's do some dividing questions. Question five, divide. Divide and conquer. Okay, I'll start with something straightforward. Five to the power of six over five to the power of three. What's that equal to? I'll give you 10 seconds. 10 seconds starting now. Oh, time's up. Okay. The answer is five to the power of three. Oops. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to five to the power of six minus three, which is five to the power of three. Great. Okay, that one wasn't too bad, I don't think. How about this one? Ooh, um, yeah, I like this one. Okay, uh, six. How about x to the power of seven over x to the power of seven. Try it. 10 seconds starting now. Okay, time's up. So this is going to be x to the power of seven minus seven, which is x to the power of zero. Uh, I'm gonna leave it as x to the power of zero. Know why? Can anyone think of why I'm going to leave my answer as x to the power of zero? There's there's actually two reasons. There's two reasons why. Anyone? Anyone can think of a reason why I'm gonna leave it as x to the power of zero and not one? Anything divided by itself is one. Can you think of any exception to that rule? Anything divided by itself is equal to one, except for, except, it could be anything except, 
Accept. Come on. I know there's a six second delay. And it takes you six seconds to hear what I'm saying right now. Yes, there it is. Anything except zero. So, the, here, there, here lies the problem. So, x to the power of zero, these two things are equal. There's no un, under, these are always equal. Always equal, no matter what. However, most of the time, x to the power of zero is equal to one. Except, except, come on, come on, eraser, except for when x, come on, x, x equals zero. I'm having difficulty with my pencil right now. So, um, if we wanted to, we could say that it's equal to one, but then we would have to say it's equal to one provided x isn't equal to zero. Does that make sense? Like if I leave it as x to the power of zero, I don't have to make any kind of, you know, I don't have to make any kind of, of uh, you know, fine print about x not being equal to zero. But if I, if I say that it's equal to one, then I'm assuming that I'm not doing zero divided by zero, right? So I'm assuming, like if this is equal to one, then that would mean that there's no way that this is zero over zero. So we are assuming something about x. So you have to really be careful about when you're like eliminating x. Like if, if an x disappears, you have to make sure, well, hold on a second. Like that wasn't a, an important x, was it? Like did I, did, I just, uh, did I just, you know, erase a division by zero? Okay. Okay, I'm not really sure what's going on in, in the chat. Um, okay, uh, okay. How about this one? Are we ready for a more challenging one? I think I think we are. I think we are. Um, okay, let's do question seven. A little more challenging this time. We'll do. <coughs> let's do this one. Six to the power of four over six to the power of negative three. Ready? 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds for this one. Go. Oh. Okay, 15 seconds is up. Okie dokie. So um, this one, I mean, we if we if we wanted to, we could make up some kind of uh, convoluted reason about how the negatives on the bottom are positive. But what I'm going to say is this is just equal to six to the power of four minus negative three. And as long as we understand how integer subtraction works, I think we're fine. So this is going to be six to the power of seven. Okay. Okie dokie, um, another tricky one. Let's try this one. Let's try number seven. This one I'm gonna give you 30 seconds for. Ooh, number eight actually. Number eight. Number eight is going to be negative nine. Negative nine to the power of, what is it? Negative three. Negative three over negative nine to the power of negative six. Okay. Um, what did I say? Let's do 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Starting now, go. Okie dokes, time's up. All right, I'm hoping you guys are, are partaking in some of the, the actual questions. I do want you to actually have some practice here, right? It, it's really important to practice these things. Like I was saying before, even if you have a deep understanding of something, it's not enough. It, it, I, I know that sounds kind of crazy to be like, oh, but I, I understand it. What else is there for me to do? Well, 
practice. You need you need to both understand something and practice. Like like you can understand how hockey works, right? Like pretty much like most Canadians know a lot about hockey and we understand you know power plays and and thing I actually don't understand. I don't watch hockey, but but you you know, you know what I mean. You can watch hockey and have an understanding of the strategy and everything like this. Um, that said, that doesn't make you a good hockey player, right? Now, a good hockey player does have to understand plays and strategy and all that fun stuff, um, but they also need practice, right? So so we need to, like, even if you're like, oh, yeah, no, I understand negative exponents, I know what to do, I still need you to practice. So uh, let's let's make sure that we're, we're, we're actually trying these out because, um, you know, uh, if you're watching me do it, that's great. That's a good good place to start. But you still need to try these. You know, get get your hands dirty. You're like actually try these out with your actual hand in your actual uh, arm with your pencil and your paper. Actually do them. And when you actually do them, then then you will find that um, your understanding grows. You you get a better understanding. But also um, these will go by much more quickly. You'll 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 get faster at these and that's that's another thing that that we're talking that, that we that we want we do want some speed right okay anyway um i'm blabbering so let's do it's negative nine to the power of well this thing minus this thing so negative nine to the power of negative three minus negative six so that would be the same thing as negative three plus six which would be negative nine to the power of negative three Sorry, positive three, positive three, oops, positive three. I'll just write three. We all know that three means positive three. Okay, um, okay, let's, uh, let's do two more questions and then we'll try something new. Okay, let's do, oh yeah, how about this one? This one here, we are going to simplify. Simplify. Uh, how about this one? Okay, something straightforward. Two to the power of four to the power of three. Okay, and I'm gonna give you just 10 seconds for this one because we've already done something that was actually harder than this. So, 10 seconds. Okay, stop, okay, oops, no, that's not what I wanted, done, clear, get out of here. Okay, so this is gonna be two to the power of four times three, which is, of course, two to the power of 12. Yeah, two to the 12. So by the way, if you want to know how to write this uh, on your keyboard, um, you can use what is called a carrot. Um, not the carrot that you use, um, but a different kind of carrot. Yeah, that's the symbol right there. So in the chat, uh, I just saw someone someone write two, and then this is what a carrot is. So if you wrote two, that means two to the power of 12. So that's two to the power of 12. Of course, when we write it on our, um, oh, you can write this on your phone. You can absolutely write this on your phone. Um, so here, I'll show you. Um, here, I'll make a new note. Yeah, so you can write, so here's two. Oh, what am I, here, I actually have a keyboard right here. So here, I'll, I'll show you on my keyboard. Although if you have Android, it might be a little bit different. Here we go. I'll add a little text box. There we go. So we would do, okay, a number, two, and then it's not in this group of numbers. You have to hit this little symbol right here. And then here's the carrot right there. So two to the 12. So yeah, you can you can write it like that if you want. Um, Ta-da! Hey, I like that. That's awesome. Two carat twelve. Uh, I think I think that's actually really funny. Good, nice one. Um, okay. Uh, beauty. Okay, ten. Ten. You know, I have to say, um, one of one of my like 
favorite things ever. I mean, maybe this is just going and showing how much of a nerd I am, but but I really like typesetting math. It's, it's something that I've, I've always really enjoyed, like basically typing out math um, on, a, on a keyboard and, and using different programs to make that math look really nice. And it's been interesting now that we are, you know, doing this uh, distance learning thing. Um, and uh, now everyone has to learn how to type math. And uh, uh, yeah, so I've, I've been enjoying the conversations that come with that. Anyway, we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to do just, uh, I think, one more question. And then I want to talk about our final project, okay, or our final final assessment, rather, I should say. Um, okay, so this is our last one, and it's going to be probably the most challenging one. So I've got negative 2 times x to the negative 3 times y to the negative oops I forgot oops sorry I hope that you're not writing it down in in real time here negative 2 to the negative 3 that's what I meant to write x to the negative 2 times y close bracket all to the power of 3 Whew. okay give that one a shot um, this one I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a full minute for this one it's a tricky one Starting now. Okay, let's uh, let's let's finish this one off. Okay, so uh, the whole idea here is that this one we have this distributive property. So this three is going to be distributed throughout these brackets. So this is going to be equal to. Well, I'm gonna throw this this negative two in brackets. It'll just make me feel better about myself. So this is going to be negative two to the power of. Oh wait, you know what though. I can't do that because I can't. You can't just introduce brackets around this negative sign because this two to the power of negative three is actually just referring to this one. Whatever that is, it's equal to the negative version of that. So I cannot add brackets to that negative two because the exponent is only being applied to the positive two, and whatever the result is becomes negative. Um, so if we happen to have an even exponent, then um, the, the, even though there's a, a negative to an, an, an even power, because we're not actually taking the negative to the third power, we're actually we're only taking the two to the, to the negative third power, and then whatever the result is, it becomes negative at the end. So it's kind of more of an afterthought. So I cannot add the, 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 um, the brackets. So this is equal to negative. 2 to the power of negative 9 times x to the power of negative 6 times y to the power of 3. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to get rid of any negative exponents, we weren't really asked, but sometimes we might be asked, we might be asked to write our answer without any negative exponents. We could write that this is equal to negative y cubed over 2 to the 9 times x to the 6. Okay? There you have it. So there's two possible um, answers for this one. Um, okay, and negative one, two to nine over. Yeah, perfect. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I'd be careful about that one. 
yeah, that looks good. I'm just looking at some of the answers here. I'd be careful about the one with the 12. Um, I'm just wondering how the 12 came. Yeah, not sure where the 12 came from, but um, but yeah, um, yeah. The important thing is is to to distribute those exponents throughout the brackets. Um, so there you have it. Okay, great. Um, now we've got about five minutes left. Pro honestly, probably not enough time to talk about the the final assessment. So I'm just going to bring up this document that I started yesterday. I'm almost finished writing the document. Um, Okay, so uh, very shortly, um, so maybe hopefully if everything goes according to plan, um, by lunchtime, uh, I will post a, um, a document on Google Classroom that will outline your final assessment. So your final assessment is kind of like your final exam. Now, when I took that survey, it seemed like Pretty much everybody, not everybody, but but there was a, a, a strong majority of people who wanted to do a final exam, um, but not everyone felt comfortable doing a final exam. So here's here's how it's how it's going to go down. So your final assessment is going to take uh, will, will be in two parts. It'll be in two parts. Part A and Part B. Part A, everyone is going to do in the same way doesn't matter what your choice is. No one gets a choice for part A. And part B, you get a choice, okay? So part A is a topic map. Uh, and I've, I, I'll, I'll give you a lot more information about what a topic map is. But essentially what it is, is a way for you to go over all the topics from throughout the year and then make sort of like this map of how they are related. So you could have some kind of map like this Okay, so these two things are related like that. So maybe this could be, um, you know, number systems, number systems, and then maybe this is like radicals. Okay, and then the way that they're related is that, um, you know, uh, radicals can be irrational. So this kind of thing. So we, 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 we're gonna go through, um, pretty much all of the topics from throughout the year. And I think what I've, I've decided is that we'll have a minimum of 10 topics. So you will choose 10 topics from throughout the year and you'll make this graphic uh, sort of organizer that lists all the different topics that we've done and the connections between them. So uh, that's part A and everybody is going to do this. Um, and yeah, okay, a question is, do we have to explain? Yeah, so just a quick blurb about what each of these topics is. So radicals could be like, you know, nothing too in depth, like square roots, cube roots, etc. that kind of thing. So um, yeah, you don't have to give like a full lesson or anything like that. Um, but for each of the topics that you choose, um, a, a, just a quick blurb about what those things are. Um, and I, again, I'll give you more information about what this is uh, in the document that I publish uh, sometime today. Um, I'm almost done. I'm just sort of uh, um, sort of proofreading it and making sure that it makes sense. Um, part B is a, either a final exam or a project, and you get to you get to choose what you would like to do for Part B. Um, yes, absolutely. If you're going to relate trig with uh, Tangents, yeah, you could say triangles. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, part B uh, is your choice of a final exam or a project. Um, so the traditional final exam is, it sounds like that's what a lot of people want. So, uh, so that's one of your options. Um, so the idea of that will be that it'll be administered through Google Classroom. It will be uh, the same length as a typical three hour exam. So you can expect to take around three hours to write it. I'm gonna give you five hours to, to write it and then upload your work, okay? Um, so there's a few things that you need to know about this. Um, 
So like we are going to treat this final exam just like it would be a final exam in school. So that means that there will be no late submissions. Um, uh, if, uh, if, if you, if you need like an extension or something, like if you're, if you tell me that you need, uh, some more time with it or something, you need to tell me that before the exam starts. Um, so what, what, what I've done is I've made a little policy that if you <clears throat> need to have a, a makeup exam, like a, an alternate date, you need to tell me a minimum of 24 hours ahead of time. So you can't just email me like 10 minutes before the exam being like, Hey, Oh, I'm not ready. I need to write it on a different day. Like, no, no, no. Like we have a scheduled time. You have to write it during that time. The reason, the reason why, why these things are important is, is not because I'm, I'm trying to be firm or mean or anything like that. It's that final exams are written at the end of the year. Report cards are also at the end of the year. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it, there's not, there's not a lot of time for me to, um, for me to write these, uh, these report cards. So I, I need that to happen, um, uh, on time. So what if your Wi-Fi goes off? Well, then you'd have to, uh, contact me either by phone or something. You'd, I mean, if there's a very special circumstance that, that happens, then of, of course I'll, I'll be, um, understanding, but um, uh, I mean, so far I, I don't think that uh, I, I've, I haven't heard uh, anything from this class about uh, concerns with with connectivity. Um, and then also, if if you're concerned about that, you don't have to do the final exam. You can always do the project. The project is a little um, a little more uh, uh, forgiving in terms of, of timelines. Do I know when school ends? June nineteenth is our last. Um, day of of uh, distance learning classes. So June nineteenth will be the day. Will be the last day that I stream live. Um, so your Wi-Fi is really bad. Sometimes it'll sometimes cut off. What if it does that during the exam? Okay. So here's here's the thing. So a, a lot of people are concerned about the Wi-Fi. So here's the thing. You have th three hours to write the exam. It's a three hour exam. I would, if I were you, I would suggest writing it for three hours. Um, that gives you two hours to upload a PDF, right? Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that your, I mean, if your Wi-Fi cuts out for the entire day, that like, you really only need Wi-Fi for a total of a few minutes throughout the entire day, right? You'd need it at 9am to download the PDF, right? Um, and then you would have, uh, you know, after the three hours is up to, to write the exam, like this is what I'm saying is it's a three hour exam. So I'm giving you five hours that gives you an extra two hours in that two hour window. I'm hoping that you'll have enough internet connection to upload a PDF. And if you, if you don't, then, then you can tell me and we'll make arrangements, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sort of, um, think of this as, as a major threat to the way this is going to work, because I, I really don't think that it's going to be that big of a, of a, of an issue. Um, like you'd really just have to upload a single PDF within a two hour window. Um, now if you want, if you want to push it and give yourself, you know, four and a half hours to write the exam and then try to squeeze it in for the last 30 minutes, well, that's, you know, you're kind of taking, taking your own risks there. And, and I, and I can't, I can't prevent that. Um, so if I were you, I would, I would follow the three hour guidelines, say, this is a three hour exam. I'm going to write it in three hours. If I need a little bit of extra time to sort of cross my T's and dot my I's, that's fine. Um, but then you have to understand then, then you're eating into the amount of time that you have to upload your work. So I, I know that, that, that it is a little bit stressful, but there's really no way of doing this that alleviates all stress, right? Um, so, so that's how that's going to work. Um, so uh, I'm just going to, and it's a PDF that you have to print. Uh, if you want to print it, you can, you do not have to print it. Um, but I, w I do require a PDF to be uploaded uh, as your submission. I, I cannot, I can no longer be, t be marking JPEGs. Uh, it's, it, it, it is just not, not working for me. So I, I will require that, that whatever you do upload does need to be a PDF. So, uh, and I've, I've been over this 
you know about a dozen times now about about how to upload PDFs uh, I can maybe even make a, a video um, especially about um, how to upload PDFs um, but I really do need you to submit a PDF so um, you do not have to print the PDF uh, that I, I put up you could leave it on your computer screen if you want if I were you I, I would print it if you have that option to um, just so that you can kind of be away from your computer and, and kind of just have some time to concentrate um, so yeah that's uh, that's how that's gonna work so you'll have a total of five hours uh, with uh, very few exceptions uh, on on late submissions um, like if, if, if it's handed in late like there's got to be a very strong reason uh, why why it happened so pretty much the only thing that I would, would accept is if the Wi-Fi went out in which case I would I would need to contact uh, your your parents or your guardians just to ensure that that actually happened um, and uh, then again something something compassionate like a death in the family or, or something along those lines. Um, I, I, I do not have um, an exam schedule yet. I don't know if there is an exam schedule, um, but I'm not going to release a date until I know uh, whether or not there is an exam schedule. If there is an exam schedule, then I'll tell you what, what we're scheduled at. If there isn't an exam schedule, then I'll just choose a date that works best for me. Um, Okay, so that's the final exam. The project, um, the project is the other option. Uh, so the project um, can be done instead of a final exam. Um, so uh, the project would be due at the same time as the final exam. So I wouldn't do the final, or I wouldn't do the project if you're wanting extra time. Like the project is not a way for you to buy yourself more time. Like everything is due at the same time. So I don't want the due date to be a part of your your decision. So um, the the project um, uh, can take you know pretty much any form that you want, provided that you can um, send me the project online. Um, the content of the project uh, needs to be something that we did in class. So. Um, it could be uh, you know several different uh, topics that we did in class and then the scope of the project um, as well you, you really do need to think about the scope like how how far into these topics you're going to be dealing with um, you know are you just going to do a couple of examples are you going to be doing some real world applications um, so the, the project there's there's a lot of different options for the project um, one thing about the project is that I do need you to include a little outline in your project. Um, so even if you do like a video or something, I still need you to submit a very short document um, just saying three things. First thing, what is the form of your project? Like, is it a video? Is it a website? Is it a, an, a, an article? Is it an essay? What is the form? Second thing, content. What, well, like, what are you talking about? What is this? What is what? Like, what is the content? What is the subject of your project? What are you talking about? And then three scope. How far did you go? Um, like, are are you going for for breadth? Are you are you trying to to talk about many many different different topics, or are you going for depth? Are you talking about one topic? And then, but you're talking about it in great detail, or is it a combination? Um, so, uh, uh, so no matter what you do for your project, I do require you to uh, make an outline. Okay. So uh, again, there's a lot more information on the project in this document that I will release today. Um, one more thing before I go, though, just a, a note on your final grade. Um, so I just want to be really transparent about this and just make sure that, that everyone's on the same page. So um, as we know, our final grade um, uh, is, it, there's a lower bound for our, our final grade, right? Can you put videos into a project? Yes, absolutely. You can do videos for your project. Could I do both and take the better bark? No, you cannot do both. You can only do one. Um, so uh, a note on your final grade. Um, so I just want to be really transparent about this. I want to make sure that everyone knows, uh, and I, I think that that everyone has probably heard heard some things about this as well. 
um, but I just want to make sure that everyone is, is on the same page. So as we know, um, the, the minimum grade that you can get on your final uh, uh, report card is the grade that you got on March 23rd, 2020. Okay, so I, th I think that we're all aware of that. Um, so uh, in addition to that though, I mean, like that obviously raises a red flag. Well, like well, then what's encouraging students to even try? Like, like if you if you had like a, a ninety five on March twenty third, then like I don't know, maybe maybe you you can just like become like a, a full time gamer and just and just sort of drop out of school for this year and then just you know ride on your ninety five and then and then ride off into the sunset as if you own the world, right? Um, but uh, you should also know that teachers have been asked um, to report on, um, uh, we've been asked to document the extent to which students have participated in remote learning uh, for the period between March 23rd and the end of the school year. So uh, on your final report card, there will be a new section, and I just learned this yesterday, that there will be a new section on the report card documenting the extent in which you participated in remote learning. And based on this assessment, um, uh, you may or may not be required to participate in recovery learning next year. So you can still pass grade nine, right? Like you can still pass like all your classes, but if, if you didn't participate in recovery learning and if you're the, the lack of participation in your, in your uh, or sorry, if you didn't participate in remote learning, if you didn't participate in remote learning and, and as a result of that, you, uh, you, you, you struggled to, to demonstrate your understanding of the curriculum, then you may be asked to, to uh, be a part of, of this recovery learning, even though you passed the class. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. Um, and there's a, a link online as well that you can check. Um, I put the link in this, in this document, but if you want for now, you can look it up yourself. If you just Google recovery learning Manitoba, um, and then look for the, the Government of Manitoba website on that. So if you just look up Re Recovery Learning Manitoba. Um, but make sure that you're actually getting your information from the government. I know that there's been a lot of uh, news outlets like CTV has been reporting on it. Uh, when I googled it, the first thing that came up was a CTV article. And it, although it's, it's nice to have um, you know, media outlets uh, reporting this stuff, we should be getting our information directly from the source. So, so make sure that you're getting your information from the government of Manitoba um, and not, not a, a news outlet because they may uh, sensationalize certain things or leave important bits out. Um, so just get your information from the government uh, and, uh, and if you have any questions about it, don't, don't hesitate to ask. So um, yeah, I'll do my best to, uh, to put this up uh, around lunchtime. Um, I, I think I think I should be able to do that. Um, he's behind by ten seconds the whole time. Oh, you're behind by ten seconds the whole time. Oh no. Well, welcome to the future. Um, you guys are all behind by about six seconds. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean if I, um, yeah, when I do the timers, I can see that there's a difference of six seconds when I when I time you guys. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go. Um, I'll just leave you with a, a quick uh, little glimpse into uh, cat life over here. So here's uh, here's Kima. Oh, she was just about to jump up. Say hi, Kima. Hey, sweetie. Hey, you. Okay, and then of course there's the famous goose. Hi, goose. Say hi to everyone. Hi. Okay, guys, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go. Um, here's my nice little coffee, yummy yummy. Can't tell if there's cat hair in the coffee or if it's on my iPad screen. Anyways, it looks kind of gross. Um, okay, bye bye, guys. Um, stay tuned for this document. Uh, oh, exit slip today. Um, for the exit slip, please comment on uh, this final assessment. So if you have any thoughts, any grievances. If you're worried about anything, let me know. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. So your exit slip today is uh, just to um, just tell me what tell me what you think about the um, the final assessment. Okay, so that there's your exit slip. 
Okay, guys, I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.